Hey everyone, this is Mark with the Aquatic Nature Studio. Let's take a look at what are your next steps after you have your sketch in hand, after you have your materials in hand, where do you go from there? How do you make that a reality? How do you bring it to fruition? Let's do that with the sketch that I put together last time. Let's throw it in the tank that's behind me. Let's see what happens. How do we improve it? How do we make it better? How do we make changes? We're gonna do it interactively. We're gonna make changes together and you'll see how things can be developed over time. So let's just jump right in. Let's get that going. So here's the sketch that I worked on last time. This is the sketch that I created and what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be taking this sketch, we're gonna be putting it into this tank, we're gonna make it a reality. We're gonna use the hardscape that I talked about. In my case, we're gonna be using Seriu Stone. But I wanna show you the techniques on how you get to that point. So even before you put in the soil, you wanna get a general idea of how do I wanna lay out this tank? What was my idea in the first place with this sketch? whether you use the creative method and you went out and had the hardscape right in front of you, you drew everything, or you went to the store, you bought everything, then you threw it together and you came up with your drawing. So let's jump in, let's start drawing on this tank. We're gonna be using Expo markers in this case, just regular dry erase markers. Uh, nothing crazy, nothing fancy. It's gonna allow you to make errors on the tank. You're gonna redo it and it's just gonna allow you to keep playing with your idea and reworking your idea. So let's just jump in. I'll show you what, what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna switch this over, and now this is gonna slowly become a reality for you. So right now I've laid in my soil, I've given myself the general idea of where I wanted my soil mounds. And I've defined that with the green line in this image. And within this area, I want to determine whether or not the primary stone is in the proper location. So for me to do that, I can either just eyeball it in this determination and just go for it. Uh, but at the same time, you can now lay in your grid for the rule of thirds. So a lot of people like to do it where they just literally break the image up into to three parts. Defined here and now red. So within this area, you can see that the focal points are actually identified. Primarily, you have a secondary stone here, which is falling into our, our first third. And then the primary stone is actually occupying a large portion of the central image. Now, we're going to guide people's eyes with this and we're gonna be pushing them towards our focal point. So our focal point is gonna be over here and it's gonna be in the distance. at that point there. So we wanna make sure that when we're laying in our primary stone, we keep accentuating that distance so that that way we can actually play with the depth a little bit further later on with this hybrid style Iwagumi layout. And then the final third of this aquarium is now occupied by one of the supporting stones. So not only can you utilize this rule of thirds as a, as a basic breakdown for your image and for your composition, you can go deeper into this. You can actually go down the path of utilizing Fibonacci numbers and creating something that's called the golden spiral. And within the golden spiral, you will see that it manages to utilize this rule of thirds and it establishes a pleasing to the eye image uh, that you'll actually find in numerous uh, bodies of work from different types of artists all over the world and utilizing different mediums. 
So if we were to utilize this method of actually establishing where our primary stone would go, we would use the center point of the spiral as the general focal point. Now you can play with that idea. You can utilize the plants maybe as a focal point within that spiral, but the placement of your item that's gonna be drawing the most out of someone's eye would typically be placed within that spiral. Now you can play with this idea. You can move this spiral around. You can spin it. You can put it in different places and you can even play within the idea of this rule of thirds. You could theoretically break it into a spiral over there and you can play with this idea. You can keep reinterpreting the idea, utilizing it in different ways that will allow you to further add depth and further develop the concept that you've been playing with within this layout. So for instance here, one way that we could go about changing this layout, we could totally eliminate the placement of the primary stone where it's located right now. We could relocate it to where the spiral is located. So now the stone has been relocated from the center point of this aquarium and has been diverted over to where the spiral is located. And again, you're playing with a focal point over here. So the larger portion of the spiral is going to indicate the open space for an aquarium like this. Whereas the denser spiral is going to indicate where it's going to be a denser planting for the layout or even a denser hardscape placement within the layout. So I think this is a good place to stop. I presented you with two forms of the rule of thirds, one in the traditional sense, as well as one that follows the golden spiral. So with the golden spiral, again, you can be utilizing Fibonacci numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. And when you Google these different topics, you'll find that they actually interact with one another and you can actually layer them together to come up with more uh, elaborate ideas as well as different forms of focal points that you can play with. So this is going to be a little mini series. This is part one where I'm drawing physically on the canvas. Part two, I'm gonna be infilling those areas that we just established in the drawing. And part three is gonna be the planting as well as uh, looking at detailing and then further adjustments that you can make. And then from there, I'm gonna be giving periodic updates of what happens with this uh, layout. So if you like this video, you like the content that I'm creating, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel, give me some information as to what you're still looking for, what you're struggling with, some topics that I might have skipped over. Um, and I'm gonna be looking at ways of how I can incorporate that into future videos. So with all of that being said, this is Mark with the Aquatic Nature Studio.